all the way to Erie, Pennsylvania, where she is in the path of totality. And this is something she's been looking forward to. This is something she was telling us about preparing us for. Uh, she had her glasses. She was everything you can think of. Caitlin, you've been out there. You've been talking with people all day. What was it like <laughs> to experience the solar eclipse? Simone, when I say it is indescribable, I truly mean it. Words cannot express what an incredible, unique experience that was. I've done a lot of stories leading up to today with folks who have been in the path of totality, who have described everything that happens, the sensory changes, the visual changes, and I still was so unprepared. It was still unlike anything I could have ever imagined. And it was so special to share that with hundreds of people. I know it might seem hard to believe now. A lot of folks have cleared out of Erie here, but there were hundreds of people all just looking up at the sky, enjoying this incredible moment together. We fell into complete darkness here in the path of totality. All of the lights around the park went on birds started acting crazy. It got so cold. We had a 20 degree temperature drop in just a matter of minutes. It was truly a total body out of body experience. And Simone, you know, I got to say there was some serious DMV representation here. We talked to a lot of folks out and about. We had folks from Maryland, Virginia, DC, College Park, Leesburg County, you name it. A lot of folks were out here all enjoying this special moment together. I met an incredible pair of new friends. They didn't know each other until today, but they ended up sitting next to each other here at Liberty Park in Erie. They exchanged numbers. They are fast friends. They told me they're going to go chase the next eclipse together. Together. Um, and it really is something that just brought everyone together in the best way possible. So we're going to hear from those new friends and a couple other folks we talked to. We had someone celebrating a birthday today. We had sisters enjoying this special moment together. Um, we'll have much more coming up throughout the next couple of hours. But I want to send things back to Michaela Lucero. She joins us live on the National Mall. Michaela, how was the eclipse in D.C.? Caitlin, it was phenomenal here in DC. It definitely got cooler. I will say it did not get as dark as I thought it would be. There was only a tiny little sliver of the sun visible and it was still pretty light outside. Yes, we had a few clouds, but they really did not get in the way of seeing that eclipse here on the National Mall. Now, I was actually able to speak with Dr. Jowins, who is with the uh, Air and Space Museum, and she gave me a really cool bit of insight about the eclipse and how they're changing the eclipses are changing over time. Here's what she had to say. We can only view eclipses in this moment in history because the moon is at this very special distance from the sun where uh, and from the earth where it can block out all of the sun from where we're standing on earth. But the moon is getting farther away from the earth over time. It moves farther away a couple inches every year. And so as the moon gets farther from Earth, it'll block out less and less of the sun. So in a few hundred million years, the moon will be too far away. We'll never have a total solar eclipse ever again. Kind of crazy to think that in a few million years, there won't be a solar eclipse to speak of. So it is pretty cool, a very unique human experience that we got to experience the uh, solar eclipse for today and some of us the total solar eclipse now we won't have another eclipse until 2044 and that's only going to be for places like North Dakota and Montana. There will be one for the entire country again in 2045. So we do have several decades until we have another experience like what we saw for today. So I hope you were able to get outside and enjoy it. There still is a little sliver here in the uh, DC area. So if you do get outside with your glasses, you'll be able to see that and enjoy the last little bit of the solar eclipse before we have to wait a long time to see another one. From the National Mall, I'm meteorologist Michaela Lucero, WUSA 9, sending it back to you guys. Well, we know it didn't get totally dark here, but it still looked different. It still felt different, you know? It was still a special, special time. Special oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, Michaela, thank you. And our area isn't the only place seeing large crowds gathering to gaze at today's total solar eclipse.
Here are some videos from around the country showing the moments the sky just went dark. Isn't this cool? You can see the one in Bernie to the right, Bernie, yeah. Texas, where it's oh, and the one in Arkansas. Yeah, it's like Look dark. How dark. Yeah. Yeah. Again, yes. these videos taken in Arkansas, Ohio. You have Texas there as well. Those were just three of the 15 states that were directly in the path of totality. And the cheering from the yeah. crowds, right? Everyone is into this. Eclipse 2024. But the animals are so confused. Oh. It's like all this screaming and it's dark. What? Can you imagine? <laughs> all right, let's take you out to Bowie State University where a watch party has been happening there. Our Melissa Kim has been with the crowd there all afternoon. And Melissa, the crowds there just did not disappoint. People have been so excited to partake. Uh, some people we heard earlier might be skipping class or their classes were even canceled. And no no doubt they got to enjoy the eclipse. <laughs> Listen, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity, right? Maybe class wasn't at the top of mind today for some people, but um, yeah, there was certainly a lot of energy here at Bulldog Stadium at Bowie State University earlier where about 1500, I believe, was the number that I was, that I was told it was students, faculty, people from the neighborhood, just people who wanted to get a glimpse of this experience that we all went through together. I'm joined now by Dr. Kenneth Harris, who actually spoke to a large bunch of these crowds earlier, and you have you've been this is this is your area of expertise yeah. here. Tell me what, what you experienced, what you felt, what you saw. Yeah, the energy here at Bowie was was ecstatic, right? And we are so excited to be able to witness the 88% totality eclipse, a once in a lifetime experience for those along the path of totality, but it was an amazing experience out here as well. And you spoke about this a little bit earlier, you know, you spoke about a lot of, I think, the big picture things, but also how this makes us feel like we're all connected in some way, shape, yeah. or form, too. Tell me a little bit about that, how people across the country, across the world, were experiencing this. Yeah, this cosmic event uh, brings a sense of humanity to us all, right? It's We're all just standing and witnessing and being in the moment of something that we have no control over. And so this is an amazing opportunity for humanity as a whole just to see what the universe offers us. And we saw some kids dressed up as astronauts. There are a lot of young people talking about their interest in science now, especially after witnessing something like this. Tell me about the importance of having women in STEM, of people in color, uh, people of color in STEM. How important is that, especially as we move forward here? Yeah, and I'm so excited that Bowie State University had this event, just building that pipeline of of children interested in STEAM or students interested in STEAM, and that in those areas is something that we need for the future, right? We want the the area to be as diverse as possible. We need folks with different experiences, different backgrounds from different cultures to move us forward together again as, as society. Exactly, and hopefully, I mean, we're not going to see this again for quite some time, but, I mean, obviously there was a lot that came up today in terms of what we will learn in terms of science and research going forward, correct? Yeah, 100%. So NASA had a number of missions that it, or a number of tests that it was doing as a result of the eclipse. In the last eclipse, or the last, um, the 2017 eclipse, rather, NASA funded a little under uh, 12, 11, 12 missions to specifically study our ionosphere and other aspects of the sun that the eclipse has only helped us to understand more. Excellent. Thank you so much, Dr. You're Harris, welcome. for your time. We appreciate it. Definitely. And again, like we said, a lot of people were very excited here. We had a lot of students out here with their glasses, of course, just taking it all in. And again, as you heard Dr. Harris say, something that makes us all connected in some way, shape or form across the across the globe today. Guys, back to you. I thought he summed that up beautifully. One of those where were you when moments, you know, that you think back on probably for yes. the next eclipse in 20, 20 years over the U.S. So <laughs> I'll see you then, Melissa. How about that? Same time, same place.